Hi everyone, my name is Mrs. McCrary and this video is part two, the nervous system and the neuron. This video is the second part of the series on biological basis of behavior. So to begin with, we need to know what the nervous system is. The nervous system is the body's communication system, one of a few. There's also the endocrine system, which is the body's um, slower communication system. But the nervous system is an electrochemical communication system. It's made up of nerves that spread out to the rest of the body and the brain can communicate very very quickly through the nerves to the rest of the body almost instantaneously and that is the nervous system the nervous system is broken up into two parts and you can see that on this diagram there is the central nervous system and that is that inner portion you can see is the it's made up of the brain and the spinal column and so that's there in the center and then there's the peripheral nervous system which is a part of the nervous system that just contains the nerves and those nerves extend out to the rest of the body if you think of like peripheral vision is your vision for the outsides of your vision here peripheral nervous system is those nerves that extend out to the rest of the body so your brain can communicate with your body through the nerves um, and then your body can communicate back to your brain through those nerves very very quickly the nervous system is broken down into different divisions, and so you can see that depicted here on this chart. So as I mentioned earlier, the nervous system is broken up into the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal column, and then it's broken up into the peripheral nervous system, so all of these nerves that branch out. The peripheral nervous system has different types of messages that are sent. Uh, one, uh, one type of message that's sent through the peripheral nervous system is the autonomic messages or the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic messages are messages that the brain sends through the body, through all of these nerves, and these are messages that are involuntary. So there are messages going to the organs or the glands. They are messages that you don't have conscious awareness of or control over. Um, some of those messages are sympathetic. So the brain might send some messages to the organs to speed up functioning and to increase it, like to increase your heart rate and your breathing. Those things happen a lot of times when you're nervous or you're getting ready for a flight or flight fight or flight situation. So if you think of sympathetic is speeding up your body functions. That's happening in those um, situations where you're tense or nervous or preparing for some kind of challenge and you don't have conscious control over that. That's autonomic. There are also some messages that you don't have conscious control over that's going out to your organs. It's called parasympathetic. Those are calming messages where the brain is um, calming the body down. I think of a parasympathetic nervous system as a parachute. A parachute brings you down, the parasympathetic nervous system calms you down. So these are the messages that your brain sends out to your body about slowing it down. So after you run a race, your brain is then calming your body down and bringing your body back to that normal state of breathing and respiration um, and heart rate. And we also are being calmed when we're digesting or sleeping, and the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for that. Under the peripheral nervous system, so messages that are being sent out to the um, different parts of your body through the nerves are the somatic messages. Those are the messages that you do have kind of a conscious awareness of and you uh, even have some kind of control over those at times. Those are somatic messages. I think of somatic as using some muscle. Um, so if your brain is sending messages to your body and you're having this conscious awareness and control over, we call those somatic messages. Those messages are things like um, going out to your skeletal muscles about movement or even messages coming back up to your brain um, about sensory information like smell or touch or taste. Next is um, understanding just the, 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 the pathways from the message from the body up to the brain and back. So the way that this works is through nerves. So the nerves are all over from your hands to your toes and they go all the way up to your spinal column. Some messages are coming in from the outside world. So when you're touching your sensory nerves or sensory neurons are picking up and detecting that stimulation. They're picking it up, you're feeling it, and it's sending it up 
to your brain and spinal column to be processed. So those are sensory. They're sensing. They're picking it up and detecting it. They're also called afferent. I think of an A, how the sides of an A are moving upward like they're moving up to the brain. And so sensory neurons or afferent neurons are picking up messages and they're sending it upward to the brain. Inside the brain and spinal column are interneurons. Those are neurons that are processing and making decisions. Interneurons. Those are the neurons that are interpreting information. Then there are the motor, this should say motor neurons or efferent neurons. These are the messages that are receiving information from the brain. So they're receiving that information and then they're carrying it out to be acted on in your skeletal muscles. Your motor neurons are carrying that message out to be acted on. Um, and I think of efferent as exit. They're going out to the body. Um, so that's how I remember motor or efferent. Reflexes are a little bit different. Reflexes are almost nearly instantaneous. It's a movement that happens really, really quickly in response to a stimulus. And this is made possible by a neural pathway that goes through the spinal column and then back out. So your sensory neurons pick it up. It goes to your spinal column and then back out to your motor neurons before it could even go and reach up to the brain. So that's how it happens so quickly. Next is the neuron and the parts of the neuron. You should be able to label a neuron and know how the path of the electrical impulse moves. So first, the neuron is the basic building block. It's the smallest cell of the nervous system. This particular cell is really unique in your body because it can also carry a message. So a neuron is the basic unit. It's the very smallest unit of the nervous system. It begins with the dendrites here over on the left. They're branch-like extensions. This is where the nerve impulse starts. The next part is the soma. Soma actually just means body, or you could call this the cell body. This is just the cell body of the neuron. This is a really interesting type of cell because it has this long extension called an axon, and this is where the nerve impulse passes through. You can see that lit up as it's passing through the, in the diagram. Um, the nerve impulse is also called action potential. So the action potential, you can see it bolting through the axon there. The axon is encased by these protective fatty tissues called myelin sheath, and it coats the axon like uh, the, the coating of an electrical cord, and it allows for the message to pass through quickly and efficiently. At the end are the axon terminals. This is where the message departs and moves on to the next neighboring neuron. I think of a terminal like a bus terminal. Uh, this is where you depart and you go on your journey, and this is where the message departs. The neurotransmitters are the chemicals that are housed in the axon terminals. They're housed here right at the end of the neuron, and so the neurotransmitters are chemicals. They're the chemical part of the nervous system. These last vocabulary terms, I'll cover those on the next slide, so just keep those in mind. Those will pop up on the next slide. On this diagram, you can see glial cells. These are cells that protect and help to create that myelin that is that casing on the neuron. So these are kind of like the worker cells that provide the nutrients and the insulation for the myelin sheath. Next is what you'll see what happens when um, the message isn't able to pass through the axon. This does not happen um, often, but it can occur in a disease called multiple sclerosis. So multiple sclerosis is a disease of the brain and spinal column where the immune system attacks the myelin sheath and it causes it to be damaged and it causes it to break away. And this, you can see how the message is not making it down the axon terminal because it's not being protected by that outer casing. And so MS is, can cause permanent damage and de the deterioration of the nerves. It will often cause an inability to um, have different motor movements because those messages aren't able to get to the different parts of the body. On this slide, you can see the presynaptic neuron. So this is the axon terminal from the sending neuron and then the postsynaptic neuron. So this is the dendrite, the start of the neighboring neuron here. And you can see the neurotransmitters, which are the chemicals. These are the different chemical messengers. You can see how they're housed in these vesicles here in the axon terminals. You can see the action potential or the electrical impulse has pushed the neurotransmitters out into this tiny gap. And this gap between neurons is called the synapse. It's a tiny fluid-filled gap 
the neurotransmitters cross this gap and then they fit into these receptor sites. The receptor sites are located on the dendrites and as they fit into these receptor sites, they trigger a new message to move through the neighboring neuron and it starts the process all over again. You can also see in this slide the process of reuptake. So after the message has sent, if there are leftover neurotransmitters, they're sucked back up through a process of reuptake. They're brought back into the axon terminal and they wait for a new message to send. So one thing that you do need to know is you need to be able to explain how action potential works. So if you remember, action potential is the electrical impulse that is moving through this cell or neuron and it passes down the axon and then it moves down into the next neuron. And so you need to be able to explain how that electrical impulse works. So to start with, at rest, the neuron is negatively charged. So when there isn't a message moving through, it's in a negative neutral state. When the dendrites are stimulated, when a message is moving through across the synapse from its neighboring neuron, the dendrites will be stimulated and small openings will allow positive charges to seep into the dendrites. And as those positive charges seep into the dendrites, they start to charge the soma. So this creates an electrical charge and when it reaches what's called the threshold or enough to send an impulse down the axon, it will create this domino effect that will push an electrical impulse or action potential down the axon. And remember, the electrical impulse is called action potential. And the action potential will fire with the same intensity every single time. It doesn't go slower or faster. Once the threshold is reached, it's like a trigger. And then it causes this electrical impulse to shoot down the axon with the same intensity every time. It's called the all or none or all or nothing principle. So once that threshold is reached, it will flood down the axon with the same intensity. So how that works, if you can see on the diagram, you can see how at this neutral state, the axon, just like the rest of the neuron, is negatively charged. But when the threshold is reached, you can see the positive charges are rushing in, um, pushing those negative charges out. You can see it's also repolarized itself. After that charge has pushed through, it recharges itself. It's called the refractory period whenever it repolarizes, it gets itself back to its resting neutral state, and you can see it on that diagram doing that really quickly. So sometimes it's called a sodium potassium punch, a sodium potassium pump, because what's happening is the sodium and potassium ions are what's rushing in and out. Um, but you just need to understand that at its neutral state, it's negative. When the threshold is reached, the positive um, charge rushes in pushing the negative charge out and it causes this domino effect. That's what's actually pushing the electricity down the axon. So the refractory period that I mentioned is the recharging period and then the resting period or resting potential is whenever it is resting, it's waiting, it's back at its neutral state and it's waiting for a new impulse to move through. So what will happen when it reaches, the impulse reaches the terminals is it will push those tiny chemicals, the neurotransmitters, it will push them out of the axon terminals into the synapse and into the neighboring neuron. So this essentially was a really brief video to explain an outline of the nervous system, the divisions of the nervous system, how those messages are passed on through the nerves, um, the different types of neurons, the sensory interneurons and motor neurons, and then how that electrical impulse works in the neuron, the different parts of the neuron, and just really broadly the neural communication system as a whole. I hope this was helpful.